the fifth metatarsal is one of the long bones that sits on the outside of the foot and it connects to the midfoot area through the cuboid at one end and at the other end it connects to your little toe. The fifth metatarsals um, can occur in three different zones along the metatarsal. So zone one is right on the tip, which is on this diagram in the red zone. So it's right at the tip um, of the metatarsal. And you can get a, a base fracture or you can get a little avulsion fracture, which is where the tendon attachment just pulls a chunk of bone off. You've got your zone two, which is what we would, which is this green zone here, which is um, at the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction. So it's kind of where the bone goes from being thicker to, to um, starting to narrow. And that's the area that we call a Jones fracture. You do also have, can get fresh fractures in zone three, which is a, a little further down the shaft, and they could be um, shaft fractures or stress fractures a little further down on the metatarsal. The metaphyseal and the diaphyseal junction, um, a bone, generally speaking, has different parts are named differently. And when you talk about the metaphyseal, diaphyseal junction, it's the junction of the metatarsal as it goes from um, sort of like a the, the thicker part through to the starting to narrow. That particular area has a really, really poor blood supply. So you've got super high risk of non-union and sometimes require surgical intervention. Whereas if it was millimeters either side of that, you might be um, completely well managed conservatively because of the variation in blood supply. Almost all metatarsal fractures are treated with a, uh, a cam walker. So a moon boot, uh, whether that's a standard boot or a boot with air supplied to try and give a more snug fit. We kind of determine that depending on the um, severity of injury in the leg shape. There are occasions as people are recovering from a fifth metatarsal fracture, if they're four or five or six weeks down the track that they can transition out of the cam walker and into a rigid sole shoe. Often they come in and they've already had an x-ray and got a, um, uh, got a result. Often it's pretty obvious based on that on that x-ray. We would uh, do a small amount of palpation, but we've, if we've already got a diagnosis, there's no point in sort of increasing patient's pain levels. On the off chance that a patient comes to you who hasn't had an x-ray and you want to assess what the best step might be, you would certainly try to locate the area of pain. You'd want to evaluate if they can put weight on the foot or it's too painful to put weight on the foot. Some people would just be heel weight bearing, so they're not loading the midfoot or the forefoot because of um, an increase in pain. They'd always have swelling and bruising, which is sort of normal infl inflammatory response. At that point, we would almost certainly, we'd probably put them in a boot because it's sort of, uh, you know, very high chance that they've got a fracture there, but we would organise for them to go to their GP to organise an x-ray.